Welcome back to the Hockey Show, and today we're talking about the Boston Bruins, a team that has once again blundered in the playoffs, losing to once again the Florida Panthers, and it is just the same old, same old for the last two years with the Bruins, where they're just incredibly good in the regular season, so good that two years ago they break the play the regular season record of all time after having such an amazingly stacked team and an amazing goaltending tandem and great defense that can play good at home and get some points on the board. Just everything going so well for the Bruins to break that record. And then they go on to lose in the first round against the Florida Panthers after leading 3-1. to one. And everything has broken them since that point. This season, I mean, it's another good regular season. They finished seventh, second in the Atlantic Division, seventh in the NHL this year with 109 points, 47 wins, 50, 20 losses, 15 overtime slash oh, shootout losses. This is a good season, right? And it's not a surprise. The team is still very well stacked, being led by David Pashenak's 110 points, Brad Marchand behind him with 67, and a lot of guys up in the mix up there with 60s and 50s of points, Coyle, Zaka up there, right? Then it's just really good depth down, just all the way to DeBrusque, and just, there's so much good def not depth on this team, especially offensively. Defensively, they've got a very strong unit back there with McAvoy and Lindholm, Grishalik, you know, Brandon Carlo. Uh, then the jump outs of into the playoffs with guys like Lori, right? A lot of good guys just really on this team, really making it tightly packed. And it's a hard team to play against, especially in an 82 regular season game, regular season schedule. And they're just very well de deep. A lot of guys that can jump up and get some good plays. And it's not a surprise that they finish up here in the standings, right? The big question marks going to this year were if Pavel Zaka and Coyle can cover the spots of uh, Patrice Bergeron and Krejci. And surprisingly this year, they did a fine enough job, right? Coyle and Zaka, like Bergeron and Krejci never were like those huge, huge, like big numbers guys, right? They didn't put up like a hundred points each season, but they all they need to do is have like a good two-way game, play a good center role, and help the wingers around them, right? And they did a good job of that, and I think they did earn their role, and they, they helped them get so far in the regular season. They were up in contention all year for the President's Trophy once again. So, surprisingly, an amazing year, but once again, fail to win against the Florida Panthers in the playoffs after barely beating the Toronto Maple Leafs in the first round. So, going into this offseason, the question is, now what, Right? And let's break it down. So currently they have $20.9 million in cap space for this season, right? And they've got a handful of UFAs, RFAs is re-sign, right? So right now, I got to say, they have a pretty good, like, stacked, like, who they have kept on this team is pretty well built, right? They still have, like, most of their depth players, top, all their top players, like Pashanek, Marshan, Pavel Zaka, Charlie Coyle are still signed, right? The depth players have guys like Brazo and Poitra and, uh... Uh, just uh, mo most of like those guys down the wings very much covered right really the biggest names for offense like DeBrusque Heinen are really the n top names that are missing right and uh like so truly nothing that much if if they didn't do anything with offense like they can let them go away right they've got some nice younger guys like Brazo that can step up into that role and start earning their NHL role right and then down on defense they've got Shattenkirk they've got Mac uh, yeah, Grishalik back there and those are the ones where it's like yeah those guys were pretty good for them this season and it well, Shatton Kirk's kind of getting up there in age, but he's a very good teacher. So it, it's a debate of like if you want to sign him or not. It really depends on the dollar value. But as you can see, as in the underlying name, and if you're watching this video or reading just back there, uh, you probably can guess that Jeremy Swayman is the big name that is going to be the big deal for them to re-sign, right? After his insanely, incredibly impressive playoff run and completely earning the number one starter role in Boston, right? The, everyone's known it for, for at least two seasons now is the Linus Olmark trade has to happen. So, with Linus Olmark having to go away, and this is a thing that's going to happen, whether they trade him to New Jersey or whatnot, the big deal for them is needing to open up that cap space to sign Jeremy Swayman, right? So, Olmark, it's going to be dealt, right? He has to. This is the last year of his deal, like, and they need to sign Jeremy Swayman. This is a has-to-happen trade, right? So, if they move him out, $5 million will be taken off the books. If they trade him away, and they, let's say the Bruins trade him, who just to name a trade, they trade him to the freaking New Jersey Devils for uh, Alexander Holt. 
Colts. No, that's Simon Nemich. I don't know, something like that, right? The, the New Jersey Devils need a goaltender. They get their goalie, right? So they get Simon Nemich on the team, so not that big of a contract. So adds around $5 million. Let's just make it simple onto the book. So $5 million now, add that up to $25.9 million. Jeremy Swayman, right? I think he's going to be a little bit more team-friendly for his contract. Not too team-friendly, but not going to be, like, insane, right? He's not going to get Connor Hellebuck Bobrovsky money. I don't think he's going to make it to $10 million, but I also think that he's done a very good job at earning this role, and especially with the cap always rising, I think he's going to make more than what a guy like Ilya Sor or make around what Ilya Sorokin makes. And so to me, I think for the best number for him is going to be $8 million, which is insane, but as the cap starts to go back up and good, good goalies like Jeremy Swayman seem to be coming less uh, less frequent, like a team like Boston needs that good goaltender to really patten them down, right? So I think Swayman gets a, be $8 million. Now, the range for good goaltenders nowadays is between 6 to $10 million, right? Bobrovsky, Connor, Bobrovsky making $10 million, uh, Vasilevsky, then you have, like, guys like Connor Hellebuck making, like, the 8.5, then, like, guys like Sorokin, I think is, like, 6.5 as well. So, good goaltenders are 6 to $10 million. I think Jeremy Swayman, being so young as he is, being 25 years old, I think is going to make that $8 million range. So to me, if you put $8 million, subtract that after Linus Olmark has been moved, is going to be about $17.9 million. Of course, who knows if it's like 8.5 or whatever, but let's just figure it's a standard $8 million. So it's 25.9 minus the 8 gives us $17.9 million left, right? Easy math there to understand. So if you even given the range too, if you want to give the range of like six million to ten million, that's still nineteen point nine to five point fifteen point nine million. So they still have a nice chunk of change left to make some good like signings, right? So between that, Jason DeBrusque uh, needing to get his uh, contract as well, he had a good off season. He had not off season. He had a good playoff, and he had forty points the regular season. So not truly going to make like the biggest of bucks in the world. And I feel like the Bruins probably want to keep him on the team for a couple more years now so I think DeBrusque probably gets around three to five million I would have said probably three to four but because of his playoff run and who, how he's been on this team for a while I feel like he might get a little bit more with the cap going up so maybe like five which I feel like would be a way over payment for him but I don't know but then uh, Matt Grishel like kind of in the same range he's a defenseman that really feels like he doesn't need that much money but especially with the defense of the Bruins and how, like, I don't really know how they could really replace him with someone, then I think, well, they can, but you know what I mean. Like, they know Grisha, like, he's been on the team his whole career. Like, I feel like he might be the guy that they, like, keep on the team. So I would say for him around three to five as well. So with those guys out of the way, plus, like, Heinen and then Shattenkirk, guys like Van Riemsdyk need to do deal, right? There's a lot of players that sh probably won't be making too much money. So regardless of anything, the Bruins have the cap space to keep everything on the team, right? Even if they don't trade away Linus Olmark, they keep him on the team for this one last season and they give Swayman $8 million. That's still 12.9 left. Like, they're going to have the numbers to keep the players that they need on this team. And then, especially with the, like, with Poitra and Brazo, Lorai, Wotherspoon, uh, Beecher, um... I think I got everyone. Like, all these, like, younger guys for the Bruins being, being paid less than a million dollars. Like, they have the, the depth. They have these players that can just stick around on the team, you know? And, uh, but... If the, um, the trading line is Olmark has to happen, right? If Especially if they really want to gear up for something. But they, they can't bring in any cap space, unless they do, which wouldn't be that bad either. But the type of player that they bring in for $5 million, I don't know. Regardless of anything, what I'm saying is they have the cap space to keep these players signed. They have the cap space to make everything work. But here's the big issue at the end of the day, is that they can keep everything on the team, really. I think they have a, they have a fine enough m amount of money that they can keep the team intact and really not lose anybody that interesting. They can, let, they can decide to let guys go. It won't be dependent on if they have the money or not. But the big question mark for me is that what happens when all is said and done and they just kind of keep the team intact is that... It's the same team that has failed them to win again. You know, it's the same thing with the Carolina Hurricanes, except the Hurricanes actually finally did something this year. But 
it's the same squad that has lost them the playoffs two years in a row. I mean, last year they had Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci. This year they failed to get out of the second round. It's the same team. And with guys like Marshan getting older, you know, like th those those truly clutch players like that, like Marshan getting 10 points in the playoff and more for so many seasons in a row now, like, th like there's only so many years left for guys like him, you know, and with but guys like Coyle and Zaka, like, do you really think they continue to be like that, those true, like, number one and two centers, especially with their playoff performance? I don't. So to me, it's like, I don't know what happens is to me i think they need to make a move they, i feel like they have some really good depth on the team and they can make a trade away for a guy like zaka they can get a guy like zaka or coil out even though their contracts aren't that bad and find another player find that one i really thought they would have been the team to go out for a guy like lindholm um i really thought uh they they would have been one of those big players to me that should have went for a guy that like one of those centermen and with like, certain, like, contracts coming up this season, like, uh, like Steven Stamkos, who isn't a centerman anymore, really, but he still can play the role. Like, if he can step in and they can somehow, like, make that move where they can get St Stamkos on this team and have another good goal scorer, that is something that would make a difference, especially with how electric Steven Stamkos was in the playoffs. That's what they're missing, is a guy like that, because the Coils and Zakas on this team that are playing lots of minutes are not getting the job done. And sure, with Brazo and Pratra, Lorai, Geeky even, like, some of these young younger guys like they did have some good playoff runs they do look really legitimate and they can change make a difference on this team but this is like the like this is the ending of this current era of the Bruins right and to me it's like it's do you just run it back again with the same guys and hope that some guys stick out this time maybe is that the more conservative and smart thing to do than go out on a limb and trade away a bunch of things that you don't have? Because they don't have a first-round pick this year or I think even next year. They're missing their second also this year, so they don't have a draft pick in the first two rounds. So they're not bringing any good prospects in from that from the top pool So and or those draft picks trade away. They already did. So to me, I just don't know what they do. I don't know what they do except sit on their hands and just kind of do just run it back and ex minus Olmark. So to me, it's uh, like they do. They will have some cap space, especially if they decide to go like, hey, DeBrusque or Grishelik, screw you guys, and they go out there and do sign a guy like Stamkos, right? That's what makes me think they could do. They could do that, or somehow they can make a trade happen with Olmark to the Maple Leafs, which I highly doubt they would make that trade. I don't think the, the Bruins would even allow to try to allow a trade like that to turn on them so i don't think they would ever let that happen but it would mitch marner potentially on the move um or a guy like brady kachuk right like if they can bring in a guy like that like a like a good boy like that to bring in who can really be a fighter for the playoffs like that would be a difference maker too but for right now the bruins it's like they got a pretty simple path in front of them like they they can re-sign the guys they need to but it's the same team so to me they're not usually I make these videos I'm like they're in a tough position I don't know what they're gonna do but for the Bruins they're not in a tough spot they're just in the same they're in the same lane and I just don't see it it's not gonna change anything I think there's gonna be still a team that can contend for a playoff spot easily and uh but with other teams like the uh the Maple Leafs seemingly to make moves and a team like the Red Wings and a team like the Senators feeling like they finally might wake up in the Sabres too. Like they that feel like they can finally wake up and take a spot in the playoffs. Like the Bruins feel like time is running out where they can't just keep sitting here like this. But I guess at the end of the day, what the hell do I know? So that is all I got to say. So thank you for watching this. If you made it this far, please, I'm begging you, please subscribe. And make sure you go down below in the description and follow the Instagram page, which will be more active up coming soon. Thank you for watching this. Too sweet. Have an amazing day. And ta-ta for now.